Well, hey, everybody, good to have you in service with us today. A big God bless you to you. We are kicking off a brand new message series that we've entitled Sermon on the Mount. We're going to go real quick today. There's so much that we're going to dive into. I think you're going to absolutely love it. First of all, of course, I want to just welcome and acknowledge all of those that are joining us online. You're coming to us from all over America and around the world. And a big shout out to all the guys and gals in all of our Department of Corrections around America. Come on, everybody. Would you just put your hands together? Would you make them feel welcome today? God bless you guys. Right on. Well, hey, um, while you're pulling up your message notes, which I would highly encourage you to do because I've got a lot of content to give you today, and it would really help you to be able to follow along, and then you can actually email these notes to yourself so you can study it later on. Plus, if you would like to take a deeper dive into the topic at hand today, we've actually created a resource for you that you can access by texting series to 51010. And so on there are different um, uh, commentaries and books, different articles that are based off of today. And so if you'd like to study through this throughout the week, I'd encourage you, highly encourage you to take advantage of that as we study through what I'm saying is the greatest message that has ever been preached in the history of the world, the Sermon on the Mount. And I just need you to know right off the bat, that this series is going to be actually very, very challenging. It's going to be very countercultural to everything that we see in our world today. And I really believe that God has led me to bring this series to you on values. And I'll tell you why. It's because I've actually become very concerned with the condition of humanity recently. I mean, the world has become incredibly evil incredibly vile. I think we see it everywhere. It's all around us. People are just miserable with life. And we keep thinking that, you know, legislation and laws are going to change this nation. And as I'm, I'm all for legislation. I'm all for laws. But let me just say this. The only thing that really is going to change this nation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like that's the only thing that can change us from the inside out. And I'm actually praying that God's going to use this series to birth a revival on the inside of us as a church. And I'm asking you to come with me on this journey over these next eight weeks. In fact, you, you will find the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And kind of the preamble for the Sermon on the Mount is what's called the Beatitudes. And we're actually going to spend a lot of time studying through them in this series. And they all start off like this. It says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1, that when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside, which, by the way, let me just stop and just say, I've actually been to that mountainside before. I've actually seen it. We've sat there before. We've, we've seen this whole thing. And his disciples came to him, and they began to teach them. And he said, hey, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And that's the topic, the statement that we're going to study today. And I think when you actually understand what it means, it's going to blow your mind. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Okay, that's next week. And then Pastor Eddie is going to talk about blessed are the meek, for they're going to inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. And then this next one, I'm actually going to speak on this topic on Mother's Day. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And then I got my dad. He's flying in, and he's going to speak on this one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will seek God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called the children of God. Blessed are the, the, the persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are when people insult you and persecute you. And falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice, get happy, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I'll just say this, that I truly believe that Jesus didn't come just to teach us some of these principles so that we could have them. I think that 
he always intended that we would actually live out the qualities of kindness, mercy, the grace of God. Because the reality is, is that when you actually embody these things and they start flowing through your life, that's when our nation, that's when the land will truly be changed. So there's two things that I need you to know right off the bat as we study through these, these different statements that Jesus has made. And the first thing you'll need to know is that every single one of them begin with the word blessed. Now, that word blessed in the Greek is the Greek word makarios. And it doesn't mean, it, it, well, it means happy and it means blessed. But when it, when it says blessed, it's not like, hey, I've got a bunch of stuff, so I'm really blessed. And it doesn't mean, hey, I'm happy, so hey, I'm, I'm happy. No, no, it actually means something so much deeper than that. It means that you have this internal joy that doesn't come from this world. Because how many of you all know your happiness is determined by your happenings? So when the sun is out, I'm happy. When it's not out, I'm not happy. Uh, when I got a lot of money, I'm happy. When I don't got a lot of money, I'm not happy. So when my, my favorite football team wins, I'm happy. And when my favorite football team doesn't win, I'm not happy. That's not the word. Because listen to me, as Christians, we should be hooked into something that is so much deeper that regardless of the circumstances, we got this internal joy on the inside. So you'll notice that every one of these statements that Jesus makes, and there's eight of them, they all begin with the word blessed. Second thing you need to know is that every one of them have a promise attached to it. They all have a reward. So in other words, if you do these certain things, this is going to be your reward. In fact, I'll say it like this. These eight statements show the potential of what can be ours. And so I want to begin this today with the very first and arguably the most important of all eight. In fact, I'll say it like this. If you don't do this first one, you really can't experience the other ones. And so Jesus comes along, and he says in Matthew, it says, blessed are, and notice this very interesting language here. He says, the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So in the Greek language, you need to know that there's actually two different words for the word poor. There's one word that means, hey, you don't have any money, <laughs> and you're poor. That's not the word. The other word means this, that you are utterly helpless. You are spiritually bankrupt. That's, that's the word. In fact, if I was translating this, <laughs> this would be the Chris Lindbergh version of that statement. Blessed are those who realize they're spiritually bankrupt and utterly helpless, acknowledging their total dependence on God. In fact, let me show this to you in two other translations so you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of this. This is God's Word translation. It says, Blessed are those who recognize that they are, and I love the way that this states this, those that are spiritually helpless, the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. The New Century Version says it like this. The people who know they have great spiritual needs, they're happy because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. So here's the problem. You ready for this? The problem is, is that most of us in America, we don't realize how poor that we actually are. So I'll say it like this. Um, when somebody has a lot it's really hard for them to see where they don't have a lot. In fact, I'll say it like this. We won't truly rely on something until we believe that we need it. And the reality is that for a lot of us, we don't think that we need anything because we're actually pretty blessed. And I'm not trying to insult you today, but the reality is, is that scores of people that I know, we live our lives in such a way that we communicate that, you know what? 
I think I got this life by myself. I, I think I can do this on my own. I remember everything about the day of September 11th. I mean, I remember every detail of that day in vivid color. Now, I know that some of you weren't even born at that time, or you were in diapers, or you were just a toddler, or what have you, but I was there. I saw, I remember I was in a church staff meeting. I was serving as a student pastor, and all of a sudden, one of the admins comes into where us pastors are at, and she was just crying everywhere. She said there was a massive bomb that was exploded in the north tower of the World Trade Center. And so we grabbed the TV and we turned it on. And when we did, I actually saw this happen before my very eyes. I saw that second plane go smashing into that second tower of the World Trade Center. I, I, rem I could take you to the room I was in. I remember every detail of that day. In fact, interesting enough, the church that I served at, we had about 600 people that were coming to the church. They offered two services on Sunday morning. Both services were about 40% full on the weekend, on a normal weekend. The Sunday after 9-11, the place was packed. There wasn't even a chair open. It was standing room only. I saw People all, they were seated on the ground all around. People desperate. They were crying. They were, I mean, they were hung. They were seeking after God. They recognized that they were utterly helpless. And I think we need to get back to that place here in America. That we once again recognize that we are spiritually bankrupt, that we are utterly helpless. Because if that can ever happen, that and only that will bring Republicans and Democrats once again to stand shoulder to shoulder. Because you all remember when 9-11 hit, what happened? On the front steps of the Capitol building, there they were joined hands together singing, God bless America. And if there's ever a time that we are so divided, so at each other's throats, and we need to come together, the time is now, for heaven's sake, to once again, and if you're listening, Washington, it's time for us to once again come together and put our dependency again on God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you the happiest people on the planet are the people that have the less. You don't believe me? Go on a missions trip with me. And here's the thing about a short-term missions trip. You actually think that you bring so much value to the people you go see, <laughs> and you bring some, okay? But what actually happens is they, in turn, deposit so much on the inside of you that you come back completely changed, but I'll introduce you to people that have nothing, and they're happier than you are. I mean, you come with me, we'll, we'll pull up in a van, and these kids will come running out. They only have one set of clothes. They're going to eat one meal that day. And they have a joy that you just cannot wipe off of their face. You go to the services with us, and I'm telling you what, you're going to watch these kids. They're going to worship God with everything they've got. The biggest smiles and joy you've ever seen. Why? Because they are 100% dependent on God. And they have more joy than you do and yet they have nothing. Which brings me kind of to the challenge that I have of the day. And that's this. How do you teach somebody? How do you do it? How would you teach somebody to be poor in spirit? That's my challenge today. That's my challenge. So when I was studying for ministry, one of my mentors arguably led hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus. He was teaching me about how to give an altar call. And he told me one day, he said, Chris, oftentimes what you have to do is you have to, you have to get people lost before they can actually get saved. And so what my goal is today 
is that in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to do my very best to try to help you to see that you don't have as much as you think that you do. And if you'll buy into this today, if you'll really go on this journey with me to see what God's word says, I can promise you that God's going to deposit something on the inside of you and you will have unbelievable joy. In fact, John the disciple, one day he was... He had been exiled to the island of Patmos. And on the Lord's day, he had an open vision, and Jesus showed up. And Jesus began speaking to him, and he actually gave John some very convicting messages to give to the churches of that day. And I believe that one of the messages that he gave is very relevant to the American church. And this is what he said. He said, I know your deeds. So let me just stop there for a second. Like, I, I, I know you're involved in the prisons and you're seeing all kinds of people changed. And I know that you guys give in crazy ways to missions and you're doing, you're touching the world. And man, I love that. Keep living that way. Keep doing that. But I also know that you're neither cold nor hot. In other words, you've become apathetic. So I know something a little bit about food. And here's what I know. Cold isn't necessarily a bad thing. I've heard all kinds of people preach this and like, you need to be hot, but don't be cold. Well, how many of y'all know cold is a lot of times a good thing? You want your ice cream cold, right? Cold ice cream is good, but you want your soup hot, right? So he's saying, I just don't want you in the middle I don't, I don't need you apathetic. I, I wish you were either one or the other. So because you're lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And then he tells us where lukewarmness comes from. It's actually an attitude that says, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth. I don't need a thing. But Jesus says, you don't realize that you're actually wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. And honestly, I'd love for you to finally come to the place that you realize that without Jesus, you're wretched. You're pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And if you can come to that place that you recognize that, and it's not just words that you hear, but you truly internalize it, and you recognize that you are utterly helpless, it's at that point you're going to begin to experience the reward, the benefit, the, the promise that Jesus talked about. So here's what I want to do for the next few moments. I want to show you four areas in your life that you actually need. And then I'm going to show you how Jesus supplies these four things. So here's the first one. And that's this. Without Jesus, and I don't know if you know this, but you end up paying for your own sins. So I give this one to you because a lot of people think that they have a role to play in salvation. So we think, hey, if I'm just a good enough person, and if I just come to church, and I just serve, and, and I give, and I ask Jesus to forgive me, that that's what's going to give me salvation. Let me say this to you. Just because you ask for forgiveness doesn't mean that you're going to be forgiven. Say it like this. Um, asking for forgiveness of your sins doesn't forgive you of your sins. I know some of you guys are thinking right now. So listen. All sin has to be paid for. And when sin is paid for, that is what forgives the sin. So a lot of people think, well, if I'm just a good person and God looks down and sees me working really hard and trying, I'm reading my Bible, I'm going to church and I'm giving and I'm serving, and I look up and I say, God, I'm a real nice guy. Could you please forgive me? I'm sorry. God's going to say, I really like that person. I'm going to forgive them. That's not what the Bible says. 
It says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. That's the only acceptable payment for your sin. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so watch this. Because of Jesus, I have the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life. See, a lot of people think that God sends people to hell that he's mad at. No, no, no. People that, people that go to hell are those that are just dead set on paying for their own sin. Because your sin and my sin all have to be paid for. It all has to be paid for. And the choice is yours. You can either let God pay for your sin or you can pay for your own sin. But make no mistake about it. Your sin will be paid for by somebody. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians, it says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Which, by the way, grace is giving you something that you don't deserve. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that nobody can boast. And the people of God, come on, say amen. And amen. Amen. Here's the second thing that I give you, and that's this. Without Jesus, I'm only able to cope through my pain and my personhood. In other words, I'll say it like this. Who you are is just who you are, and whatever happened to you is is what happened to you. And I really believe that God wants to do something very special in our church today through this point right here. And that's why I've asked Isaac to come out a whole lot sooner than he normally would. Because I want you to feel this today. I want you to know that without Jesus, the solution that we have in life is just to put a little Band-Aid on our wounds and just walk through life, just coping with the pain. And you keep walking around with all that bitterness and that hurt because of what people have done. So you keep hating people and you keep letting people hurt you. And and you tell people all the time, man, this is just who I am. I just have issues. And I can't get over these issues. I'm gonna always struggle with these things. This is just who, who I am. And I need you to look in my eyes today and I need you to hear this. The kingdom of God is not you just limping along in this thing called life. And looking at people all around just saying, hey, this is just my lot in life and I've just got these issues and I'm just gonna always be coping with my pain and putting Band-Aids on that wound that's on my heart. Please pray for me. That's not the kingdom of God. Jeremiah prophesied and he said, they offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. And honestly, that's the world's message to us today. They give assurances of peace, but you still don't have any peace. In fact, what you've come to the conclusion is, is that there is no peace. I'm going to tell you who I am today without Jesus. Without Jesus, I'm a shy, insecure kid. I was a kid that was bullied massively in elementary and junior high school. I'm telling you, the enemy tried to hijack the purpose of God on my life. It got so bad. I remember in in junior high when we would have youth group events with the church. They'd go out doing things and I would be at the back of the auditorium hiding underneath a row of chairs, bawling my eyes out because I was so scared to be able to go hang out with a bunch of others. In 10th grade, God is my witness. You talk to my mom. God is my witness. In 10th grade, I couldn't even walk up to the counter at a McDonald's and place an order because I was so insecure in myself. I mean, I hated being in front of people. I'm the guy that I failed my speech class in high school. I failed my speech class in Bible college. And yet, look at what God is doing through me today. Come on, somebody. And I know, I'm, I know I'm not the best preacher that's out there. <laughs> Trust me, I know that. But you ready for this? I'm not nervous being up here today. God has completely, totally set 
me free. He has healed me. And watch this. Because of Jesus, I have the power to be healed and transformed. In fact, let me show this to you in Scripture. It says in 1 Peter, He hid, He Himself, so that's Jesus, He bore our sins in His body on the cross so that we might die to our sins and live for righteousness. And by His wounds you have been healed. And watch the rest of this. For you actually were like a bunch of sheep who were going astray, like you wandered away from God. But now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your what? Come on, say it out loud with me. Your souls. Did you know that your soul can be overseen? I want to say this to you today. No matter what the condition of your soul is, the power of God. God can step in and he can heal you from the innermost part of who you are. In fact, it was the time when I was studying through this message here and I'd gotten to this point that I felt the Lord walk into my study. I mean, it was so amazing that I actually shut everything down. I actually started, I couldn't stop the tears from flowing. And I heard God give me some very clear instructions. Listen to me. God doesn't want to just put a bandage on your wound and just be with you while you cope through the pain of your life. He wants to heal you and transform you so that you become a completely different person. And I know that I told you a few weeks ago that it's very, you know, maybe three or four times a year does God show up in my office when I'm studying and visit me in such... And yet it's been happening with regularity here recently. And I'm thinking, God, what in the world are you doing in our church? What are you wanting to do in my life? And so I'm going to tell you what I felt the Spirit of God say to me. He told me to tell you that there are scores of people that are in the services today. That you have been tormented in your soul. And that he's about to step in and heal you. There have been scores of you that you have actually been experiencing anxiety at all time levels in your life. Some of you have been having a hard time sleeping because of all the different things that have been coming against you. You've been feeling anxiety and fear and insecurity. Some of you, the, the stress is beyond bearable. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me to tell you that it ends today, that by the power of the Spirit of God, He's about to walk into this service and He is going to heal you at the deepest part of who you are. And I'm telling you, here's what's about to happen. We're going to close this service out different than we normally do. In fact, in just a moment, when I say amen... I'm going to have you stand. And those of you that are needing prayer in your life for any one of these areas, our prayer teams are going to be here. I'm going to jump off of this platform, and we're going to pray with you. And the touch of God is going to visit your life, and you are going to be set free. It ends today. Amen. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want to just put a Band-Aid on your heart. He wants to set you completely free. And that only happens when we finally look up and we acknowledge that we are utterly helpless. You ready for this? You don't have to stay like you are. You don't, you, you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be insecure. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be tormented. You don't have to be full of anxiety and stress. No, the Holy Spirit wants to touch your life, and he wants to change you. And the people of God, come on, say amen. That's why it says in Galatians, check this out. Paul said, but the fruit of the Spirit. So in other words, if you get around God long enough, <laughs> these different things are going to start popping out in your life. And that's love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Look at this next one here. 
Did you know that some of you didn't even realize it, but you could actually be gentle? You can be gentle. A lot of people think that God's up in heaven and he's this angry judge up there just waiting for you to mess up so he can make you a little grease spot on the ground. <laughs> and that's not your God. His favorite part of the day is letting you off the hook. And notice this last word here, self-control. Are you guys catching anything out of this today? Is this helping you here? Okay. Y'all being quiet on me. You know, the more you amen me, the faster I preach, you know, and so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the amen over there. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yeah. Let me give you these last two really quickly, and then we're going to pray. And that's this. Without Jesus, I'm just trying to find or create my own life. You know, one of the number one questions I get from young people, what's this life all about? Like, what's my purpose? And I'm so sorry to tell you, but you'll never discover your purpose until you get close to God. That's why Jeremiah said this. He said, for, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. So notice this. God and God alone knows those plans about your life. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And yet the world comes along and says, ah, all you are is nothing more than an accident. That's it. Used to be some protoplasm, you know, floating in some, you know, scum in a pond. And after 100 million, billion, trillion years, you finally evolved into a human being. Do you know it takes more faith to believe that than the fact that God actually has a purpose for your life? So watch this. Because of Jesus... I have the ability to truly know who I am and what my life is all about. Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians, for we are God's, come on everyone, say this word out loud with me, we're his masterpiece. And some of you thinking today, man, because you are out of your mind. I'm no masterpiece. Let me tell you something, it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It doesn't matter what other people think about yourself. God sees you. God looks at you. He sees his masterpiece. And I don't know that you feel like sometimes I've messed up too badly and I've botched things up. Can I tell you that your, your sin is not greater than God's power? Your sin is not greater than God's grace. Please hear this today. For some of you, the word of the Lord for you today is you need to realize that you are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can, what? Do the good things he's planned for us a long time ago. So watch this. Before God ever created you, he first created a do. So God didn't create you and go, well, my goodness, what am I going to do with them? <laughs> no, there was something that had to be done on this earth. That's why you're here. Two greatest days in your life are the day that you were born again spiritually and the day that you discover why you were born in the natural. Two greatest days. And I'm telling you this, you're, you, God did not create you for survival. He created you for significance. Your life will never make sense until you're fulfilling the purpose of God for your life. Here's the last one I give you, and that's this. Without Jesus, I'm living my life for temporary joys. In other words, you ready for this? Watch. Um, I, I, I used to have fun going to the games, but they're not fun anymore. And I used to have fun going to that one restaurant and getting that one meal, but it's not fun anymore. Do you know what you're experiencing? It's a new word. I just learned this. It's, it's, it's the word anhedonia. It, it literally is a symptom of depression. Anhedonia. And it means this. It means that there used to be things in your life that when you would do them, they caused so, you, you just enjoyed them so much. They brought so much joy. But they're not joyful anymore. And you need to know that you don't have to live that way. 
The Bible says in 1 Peter, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And watch this, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Do you know what your inheritance is? You ready for this? It's living a life in such a way that you're making the difference in other people's lives for eternity. I maintain that the happiest people on this planet are people that are taking their time and their finances and their talents and their relationships and their influence and their intellect and they're taking it all together and they're using it to impact people's lives for God for eternity. And I also maintain that the poorest people on this earth are those that think that, well, if I can just buy it and smoke it and sleep with it and do it and travel it and eat it and climb the corporate ladder and sign the biggest contract that's ever been signed in the history of mankind and build the biggest company and, and acquire all of these different things, I maintain that those are things that will give you joy for a moment. It's fleeting. It doesn't last. And you know it doesn't. You know that does not last. No, no, no. When you live for God, when you live in such a way, man, you'll, you'll experience. Oh, and, 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 and I want to deposit that craving on the inside of you to live a life that really matters. So watch this. Because of Jesus, I can have the joy of living a life that glorifies God and impacts others. In fact, let me give you just one last verse here today. It says in John, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. And I've told you this, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So what's the first big idea from the Beatitudes? Are you ready for this? Here it is. The happiest people on this planet are people that look up to heaven and just say, oh, Jesus. I need you. I need you. And when we come to that place, that's when true joy fills your heart. So do me a favor, all across this place, would you just please stand to your feet? I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. If you feel comfortable, why don't you just Put your hands out in front of you, maybe your palms up in the air, just a sign of surrender between you and God, declaring, God, I need you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to ask for Chantal to begin to sing this song, and as she sings, I'm going to ask our prayer teams to come down to the front, line up around the front here, and as she sings... If you're here today and you've been battling with your, maybe your heart's been tortured, maybe you've been filled with anxiety and stress and insecurity, you've been battling all of these different areas, the Holy Spirit is about to walk into your life and he's about to set you free. Don't you miss this moment because the Lord is stopping this message, this service, changing it all just for you. So come on, Chantal, why don't you just lead us out prayer teams, why don't you come? Come, come, come. And as she begins to sing, I want you to step out of your chair. And come on, let's be prayed for. And let's watch God touch your life in a massive way. <laughs>